Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself Jonathan MS Pierce. This is Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 17th of November 2023. Please go and check out the live chat I had with Jonathan Fink of Silicon Curtain earlier. It was such an engrossing conversation, or at least I hope you think so. Really enjoyed speaking to him and, and we plan to talk again actually relatively soon as well, which might be happy, which might be you might be happy about if you did indeed enjoy that as much as I did. I just got a load out of it. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to go to the front line and to the northeastern axis, the Kupiansk to Svatova to Kremina front line. Just before we do so, pause the video if you want to know what the lines mean on my map. Right, okay. So as you can probably guess uh, from there being a lack of pins, there are no confirmed uh, changes to territory as according to the map as I refer to but there is quite a bit of activity going on up and down these lines you can see that the defensive lines are now in a brighter yellow thanks to JR who's done all the mapping today that's off to you sir you are a ledge uh, so here we have not a lot of change but fairly intense fighting i think there's quite a bit of footage actually coming out from the kupiansk area of uh, of equipment being lost uh, i've seen more footage coming from there recently than i have for some time uh, there are a few claims however Syriac maps i don't know i think this has just come out so it's not on the mapping possibly yet and this is a claim that the situation on the northeastern front, the Russian army has advanced south of Ivanivka, forcing the Ukrainian army to, to withdraw from some parts of the village there. So if we go up to this this area, this this will be changed for tomorrow now. Um, that is a withdrawal in this area of Ivanivka. It's in a grey zone at the moment. There's been this march towards the west from the Russians around the Yehidne or Olyansky area. Uh, and part of that village might be under the control of the Russians, as according to, as according to Syriac maps, uh, at any rate. And then we have, uh, as I see, as I say, lo lots of footage coming out. East of Kupiansk, Ukrainian forces continue to put together a very uh, effective defense, anchored roughly 15 kilometers east of the city. Seen here, a Ukrainian soldier nails a Russian tank with a US-supplied FGM-148 Javelin anti-tank guided missile. So that's a top-down attack mode. It's where you fire it up. It, it goes up in the air. In fact, you'll see it from the beginning of this. I won't show you the explosion, but you can. it says here's the tank in red. And you'll see the missile just there. Just So that that's the trajectory it takes. And then it just comes straight down at a very rapid rate to blow up the tank. So you can see it up there, goes up, and it comes down and blows it up. So that took place. Well, where? Let's have a look. This is the geolocation from where that of, of where that tank was destroyed. And you can get an idea of where the Russians are operating. This is where it is. So right in on the edge of the Russian defensive line, as according to Syriac maps, if that's where a Russian tank was attacking, that would still confirm what Andrew Perpetua is saying, which is that the Russian defensive lines are much further back. If, uh, well, actually, let's go and check how much further back that might be. We are looking at a 1.5, 1.4 kilometer difference between those two lines. Uh, so... Yeah, that would be where you would expect the Russians to be attacking if they're attacking from their defensive lines. So this would be the grey zone. Or it could be a Russian tank on their defensive line. Probably better suits the uh, the Andrew Perpetual line, to be honest. If the Russians are attacking, the Ukrainians are repelling them there, then that's where you expect the ta a tank to attack into the grey zone and then get hit. But either or... Uh, that is a bit, a little bit more contextual information for you. War monitor, although really help with a lack of provenance for this claim. No sourcing here. Ukrainian forces conducted a localized counterattack north of Ivanivka, capturing several positions. I can't verify that at all, but it could be that around this area where you saw that, um, that javelin being launched, possibly in that area, the Ukrainians could have mounted a counterattack. Uh, but again, no, no detail to that. Right, we'll come down now uh, past... Uh, Krimina and the Serebryansky forest where there's activity and we can see that Andrew Perpetua has some Russian gains in and around the Bilohorivka area we haven't seen much change here for some time Syriac Maps has a much more generous front uh, defensive line for the Russians here the Andrew Perpetua line is some way back but is creeping 
forward but that is a first move forward we have seen for a number of weeks possibly even uh, maybe a month or two in that area it's been fairly static there for a long time just to remind you of the topography of this area we have a kind of chalk pit or quarry here which comes down um but then all around bilahurivka there are there are high there is high ground it's actually fairly mountainous it might not look it here but actually the, these are these are quite steep and or mountainous uh, peaks there and as you can see over over here towards the russian line it just means that bilahurivka is down in a bit of a dell there that, that gives you i i guess view on that it's it's basically rubble uh, that that settlement has been for an awful long time you've got people hiding in basements there but it's not exactly uh, a joyous place to hang out and try and hold on to uh, with when you've got high ground all around here and it means that actually it's very difficult for either side to make considerable gains but nonetheless there is um, some movement around there right we're going to now come down to Bakhmut, where actually relatively quiet, all things considered, uh, the ISW doesn't really say too much um, that gives us any cause to move the mapping or place any pins. So it is still obviously very active, but no changes of uh, territory. Now we come down to Holivka, where yesterday there was quite a bit of talk about a surprise gain for the Ukrainians around this kind of waste heap, slag heap, another one of these kind of mining areas. Uh, here we have Suryat map saying that on the Holivka front, the Ukrainian army advanced beyond the defensive line, taking control over positions on the no man's land area and crossing the 2014 DPR defensive line where troops took control over Terracon number two, three and four. So those are similar to the Terracon that we that we've seen in Avdivka, these kind of slag heaps north of Holiska coal preparation plant, while the attack or to Chorna Kohanka Cinebarite quarry was repelled by the Russian army is a claim there so there is uh there are quarry sort of area you can see this is a particularly tall area there because this on my mapping here this is not accentuated um by emphasizing the terrain features which you can do andrew perpetua does that on his mapping and increase it by 300 percent, so you can get a better idea this is all seems to be what it is as far as i can work out unless something's been done to my map that i'm not aware of so you can see there's some really high slag heaps and and uh quarry features uh around here that will be uh i would have thought fairly difficult to take control of but the ukrainians are making gains around here as according to uh to Surat maps and they appear to be either in control of of these heaps or at least the russians are not in control of them and it is a great area as you can see there there are quarry features all around this area but uh yeah quite oops sorry about that quite a difficult place i would have thought for the russians to make any further gains in and that's probably why the 2014 lines are there because it starts getting you know higher as you look to the west over there so th this is much higher ground and then you know as we circle around we can see that the ukrainians have done this surprise push and you know as an area of surprise to take control of or, or at least push the russians back so uh then there is higher ground around there that the ukrainians might struggle to take with the kind of speed that they've just taken that area or at least push the russians back anyway quite an interesting topographical area that uh just gives you a bit of an understanding of the terrain so we'll move on from there and come down to avdivka where you'll see uh, some gains for the russians both north and south and that's according to both mappers andrew perpetua and uh, Suryat map so what do they have to say we'll go to the ISW actually that here says geolocated footage published on the 16th indicates the Russian forces marginally advanced north of Avdivka coke plant northwest of Avdivka Russian mail bloggers claimed on the 15th and 16th that Russian forces seized several positions near the coke plant and waste heap and that step over was a contested gray zone okay just to remind you so step over is this village that has been kind of reduced rather rubble I, I i would have thought certainly in the this eastern area now that is a gray zone according to isw well referring to russian sources but it could well be the russians are trying to push here across the berdici whilst at the same time 
pushing across to the coke plant reporting from ukraine had some video footage and did their video on attempted strikes across here it's not a great distance but the russians have been repelled there have been hammered particularly by drones there's a lot of drone activity around this area and we can see that the russians have according to surat maps made some gains to the north here around these water features and the water treatment plant continued gains going towards kamyanka there um the geolocated footage that the isw was referring to is this telegram uh, post here that says that the russians have uh no actually the russians have been struck by an fpv drone in this location right let's look at these gains as according to the geolocation so the geolocation uh shows that the russians were hit in this position by drones and uh, that's probably the drone footage it shows a couple of people just by a bank getting hammered by drone uh there's a number of of foot pieces of footage coming out of the russians having a bit of a hard time trying to attack the coke plant nonetheless it does show that they are trying to move on that coke plant which is i think significant russian mill bloggers claimed on the 16th that russian forces also advanced northwest of krasna Horivka in the direction of Badichi. One Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces are attempting to avoid personnel losses during their attacks on Krasna Horivka. Russian sources also claimed that Russian forces are advancing into Avdivka's southeastern industrial zone along the Yazinuvata road and have captured at least half of Avdivka's industrial zone. So this is to say that whilst they're also attacking the coke plant and attacking south of uh, Krasna Horivka, Sort of to the east of the slag heap, the Terracon. They're also moving towards Padici from the northwest uh, of of where the coke plant is there. So uh, a number of vectors of attack there. And then coming back down to this area around the southeastern industrial zone, uh, we can see that Suryat Mats has the Russians really pushing the Ukrainians back, controlling most of the of the zone there. Andrew Perpetua has ha has them kind of halfway through that area. So either way, the Russians have pushed back the Ukrainians there. And I think that's important. That That's obviously held since 2014. And to lose what are established fortifications like that probably means they'd be quite difficult to take back. But it's also, you know, showing that the Russians are working with some momentum in that area and indeed you know this is what surat map says of first of all the area by the coke plant you can see that there's a tiny bit of gain uh, in the area but they are basically uh fighting uh tooth and nail over the meters between the coke plant and the terracon uh you russian army is making small advances in the forest belt adjacent to the coke plant where clashes are taking place in addition russian forces are trying to enter the dachas area south of the ponds so in this kind of area over there and then furthermore they say of this southeastern industrial zone that the russian army is taking control over most of the pronka industrial area so it's still looking very challenging for the ukrainians in the avdivka area nothing has changed in that respect and it's uh yeah it's going to be some something to look out for because you don't want the uh, the Ukrainians to capitulate. I mean, some people in my threads, for example, saying no, Avdivka won't fall, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it is, I think, pretty dicey there at the moment. I, I just I wouldn't make any such bold claims. Uh, when we go down to the ISW again and back through what they claim, really, there's not not an awful lot to report until you get to Robertina. So that while there is activity in Novomikhailivka uh, and in the Staromilnivka sort of area, when we get to Robotina or Robotina, there are, there are a few things to report. So here, Ukrainian forces continued offensive operations in Western Zaporizhia on the 16th and made confirmed territorial gains near Robotina on the 15th. A Russian mill blogger published uh, the geolocated footage dated november the 15th showing russian forces striking ukrainian positions immediately west of robotina indicating a marginal ukrainian advance well let's have a look at that here we have the marginal advance 
uh, positional combat operations in the Orokiv direction, shelling of the position of the armed forces of Ukraine by an FPV drone, a uh, Russian FPV drone. So let's see where this has the Ukrainians. And uh, no, not a lot to report there. I don't know why that didn't particularly work. Here we go. So, yeah, I don't know that, that shows any great advance there. That's behind both Andrew Perpetua and Syriac Maps. Uh, Russian defensive line. It might actually show advances con concerning the R Ukrainian defensive line. So they have moved their defensive lines forward, perhaps, uh, and that might not be grey zone. So it could be that the Ukrainians control that area, but they've been hit by FPV drones. Well, that would push the Russian defensive line further back, uh, as according to Surat maps. There, it might fit more in line with what Andrew Perpetua is claiming the area with the blue line there. So. It could well be a, a little bit of a game for the Ukrainians in terms of their offensive uh, manoeuvres um, in that particular part of the sector. So then we hear from the ISW that there's uh, there's some challenges maybe over in the Piatikaki area. Actually, before we get there, we're going to talk about, about Kopani, this uh this neck of the woods and also Nesteryanka there. So RSW says Ukrainian military observer Mashevets assessed that the Ukrainian forces likely achieved some sexes, successes in the direction of Novoprokovka, which I'll show you that in a second, and are only separated by forest belt from the settlement defended by the Russian 108th Guards Assault uh, Regiment, that's the VDV Air Assault. Mashevets added that Ukrainian forces appear to marginally repelled, interesting term, marginally repelled elements of the Russian 136th. Um, in the Kapani direction a few days ago and advanced closer to Nesteryanka. One would presume that that is the Ukrainians advancing towards Nesteryanka in this area as they have been pressuring there for a few weeks off and on and maybe the Russians are counter-attacking in the Kopani area where the, Ru the Ukrainians had had more success over the past month or so. Novoprokovka, uh, there's only a forest belt that kind of separates uh, the Russians from the Ukrainians, quite where exactly that is, I don't know. This is old footage, 2018, and there might be, I don't know, more trees. I don't know, five years is not a long time to, to grow trees. I don't quite know where the forest belt, belt is they're talking about, but there are some tree lines uh, that could uh, that could indicate the front line, maybe around there, the line of contact. So anyway, uh, that is that area and then in the Pieti Chetki area ISW uh, goes on to say that Russian sources claim that Russian forces marginally advanced northeast of Vasilivka in the western Zaporizhia Oblast on the 16th and that Rogov the Zaporizhia Oblast occupation official claimed that the Russian forces advanced by five to six hundred meters in the Pieti Chetki area so that is here uh, a, a village that the Ukrainians had pushed the Russians out of, but it could be under quite a bit of pressure from the Russians if that is to be believed. Right, and then we go down to the Kherson region again where there are no pins, but still a lot of talk. Uh, quite what's going on in this area, it's difficult to know because operational security is tough, but I also think the Russians have probably tried to throw as much as they could into this area. There are claims from Russian sources that they are taking those forces from neighboring areas so it could be that they are taking forces from the Tokmak direction and placing them here and that would leave the Tokmak direction obviously somewhat weaker um we'll see what the first of all the ISW has to say geolocated footage published on the 15th shows Russian forces striking Ukrainian positions northeast part in the northeast part of Krinky I'm not going to show you that but you can you should be able to know I mean They've been in the northeast part of Krinky um, for some time, at least according to Andrew Perpetua and Suryat Maps. I mean, both of them indicate that the Russians have been pushed back as the Ukrainians are trying to push towards Korsanka as well as towards Kozachi Lahiri. Um, what else? A Russian mill blogger claimed that Ukrainian forces launched an unsuccessful landing attempt in the Antonisky Bridge and Railway Bridge area. Um, as well as battles still going on at Poima and Pishchenivka. So that is to say that just down the river a little bit, we've got um, Pish, uh, Pishchenivka, Poima, and then the railway and road bridges seeing uh, quite a bit of activity 
uh, there it is that that's the road bridge and this is the rail bridge seeing some attempted landings of the ukrainians there but repelled as according to russian sources uh, let's go and look at look through a few other sources so our troop quote our troops are moving to the other side i will not reveal military secrets because it is already in the media we have already thrown some forces now they want to consolidate to plan further offensive actions that's major general Dmitry marchenko talking about the left bank and there's been lots of conversation over the last day or so that the ukrainians have very publicly said we do have footholds it's the first time they've been so open and overt about their the proposed gains in the area the russians are admitting that they the, the ukrainians have footholds and i guess it's all in the balance now do the russians try and push them back across the river or do the russians ad uh, adopt a defensive line that is more favorable for them this is what uh, and as Puck Nielsen was talking about in his video this morning, worth watching, uh, that, that that's a little bit of a dilemma for the Russians. War Monitor says, again, not a great deal of detail here, but quote, don't know where the quote comes from, Ukrainian Marines gained more ground in Krinky. Well, uh, okay, uh, anyone could make assertions. Right, Anton Gerishchenko says, the armed forces of Ukraine for the first time officially confirm their entrenchment on several bridgeheads on the left bank of Dnipro River in temporarily occupied part of Kherson. This was confirmed by the Marines' Facebook page, which said, as a result of pre-planned measures, measures to repel the large-scale armed aggression of the Russian Federation, the armed forces of Ukraine conducted a series of successful military actions on the left bank of the Dnipro River in Kherson uh, region. Thanks to their courage and professionalism, the Ukrainian Marines, in cooperation with other units of the defense forces, managed to consolidate several footholds during combat russian occupiers suffered heavy losses in manpower and equipment in particular since the beginning of the, these operations the enemy has lost 1216 personnel killed 2217 wounded 24 tanks 89 artillery systems and mortars 135 units of various vehicles 48 armored combat vehicles including apcs and ifes 9 ml mlrs 14 watercraft 15 units of special equipment four command posts 29 ammunition depots both field and stationary um, in addition a consolidated electronic warfare unit of the marines neutralized 135 fpv drones and five operational and tactical drones Ukrainian Marines are conducting fire attacks on the left bank of Kherson and are carrying out actions to destroy the enemy. Wow. So that's quite a lot of detail in terms of what the Ukrainians have exacted as a cost for the Russians. How accurate that is, I, I can't speak to it. But that is quite a number of personnel that the Russians have lost um, since the beginning of these operations. I don't know when they would class that as being right now tipolinski has been put in charge of the area i read you a story that they had he's he committed 76 troops to a diversion uh, maneuver that ended up having those that ended up being well i don't know how many committed but there were 76 i believe killed uh which was uh, pretty controversial and the russians complaining about that what well, tipolinski brought new forces removed uh from another area because the nipro group can't deal with a small bridgehead so the nipro group cannot destroy two enemy companies holding a bridgehead of 10 square kilometers due to their fragmentation in small numbers this is such a discrediting of our main crisis manager who became general Toplinsky, who replaced makarovich and there is nowhere else to go can i st t still tell the truth that from the right bank there is such a stream of fire of all types and these two companies dispersed along a front of about six to seven kilometers which need to sleep at some point and carry cargo from boats cannot be collapsed yet and diverting forces from neighboring direction is to put it mildly alarming okay so quite a big account here talking uh, about how it's fairly alarming what the russians themselves are doing and then again some some reiteration of those claims marines russia suffered close to 3000 suffered close to 3500 casualties in dnipro river battles and uh, uh, that includes 1200 killed and a dozen pieces of military hardware in uh, in dozens of pieces sorry so it's been an expensive defense for the russians here and you think this would provide some ample opportunities for the ukrainians to keep their consistent degradation of russian equipment going uh where they have slowed down in many other places um bakhmut certainly seems to have ground to a bit of a halt avdivka is worrying they are making some minor gains the ukrainians in the robot Robert, robotina area but other than that it is it is, I think, really a case of having culminated, making sure they do keep the pressure up in, in a number of places and just get those forces reconstituted and get your equipment ready 
for a push because I think the Russians will not be able to achieve too much. I mean, Avdivka's a worry. Okay, so that's on a knife edge and they could end up taking Avdivka. But at a really tremendous cost that might end up being some form of Pyrrhic victory where they take the cost, but it leaves them weaker going forward. And then that leaves them ripe for a counter-offensive. And I think Ukraine's next counter-offensive, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. Of course, the same challenges will exist, which is the Russians having dug themselves in minefields, fortifications and slow going. But if they can spend months using HIMARS and cruise missiles and ATACMs, and artillery and if they can get enough ammunition for all of those bits of kit to hammer the the russian lines and keep degrading their equipment then it really could be that the ukrainians are in a much better position come sort of march next year uh, and that's that's what i would hope and I, i'm assuming that would be their intentions that's that's their strategy there anyway thank you for watching please like subscribe and share take care and i'll speak to you uh, probably not for the rest of today uh, having done that live earlier, but uh, tomorrow, uh, and I should be able to do it in, in the morning because sporting football matches are later in the day. So uh, it might well be a Saturday morning videos for you. Anyway, take care. Speak soon.